Greetings, friends, and welcome to this uh, crazy experiment of mine, which is the Virtual GM. I'm Frank Sicardi. I'm your host from Cyborg Prime Games, and uh, um, I'm uh, I'm a programmer. I'm a gamer. I love Traveler. I've been a GM for a long time, so I was kind of looking for a way to take a break from GMing. Maybe make a solo GM robot thing out of uh, um, Chat GPT AI. Seemed pretty pretty cool and easy to do at first. Um, so I just wanted to uh, say if uh, what what we'll do is we'll go through the adventure, and this is going to be a, um, a, a an adventure created right now um, as we play. And the the uh, virtual GM is going to uh, take us through the story, and the the story will um, uncover as we progress. Um, the uh, the first version of this uh, was a um, uh, just a chat uh, an elaborate chat GPT um, prompt, and so what I've done in this version is this is actually tied in through Python to the um, to the uh, uh, ChatGPT OpenAI API, so um, it's uh, it's tied in that way. So we're going to get we have a little bit more control over stuff uh, right now. I've got like a persistent mission going. Uh, it should be able to go indefinitely without crashing. We'll see. Um, I was having some troubles with it this morning. So anyway, so we're going to check this out together. Um, one thing uh, I've d I've noticed uh, kind of promoting this around is uh, I don't you know people aren't quite ready for uh, virtual GMs they got some hate on some of the forums and stuff and um, I just think people haven't tried it out yet because a lot of what folks said were things like you know it has no soul and oh now I don't have to think for myself just what I always wanted and stuff like that but that's not what this is about this is about um, there's a lot of people out there who just want to do solo gaming Maybe they can't find a group, or they have social anxiety, or um, the nearest GM is far away, or they don't have good bandwidth on their computer to run a um, uh, to to run like a virtual, you know, like a chat, like a, a virtual tabletop. So this is a way that uh, we can uh, address that. So. Uh, what this does is uh, this this makes uh, an adventure for any genre, and you can specify. I want this to be a Star Trek. I want this to be a Star Wars. I want this to be um, a, a, a spy thriller. I want to be like James Bond. Um, whatever you want, you can uh, put it into this. So yeah, it's uh, super weird and cool. Um, you can join me on my Discord. Yeah. Um, People, uh, you can uh, come join me on my Discord or join me in the uh, YouTube studio. Uh, sorry, the YouTube on my YouTube channel. Uh, there's links uh, back and forth be between the two platforms. If you join me on Discord, you'll be you'll be uh, live in the studio with me on my chat. So keep your mic muted unless you're talking to you know place a move. But what we'll do is we'll go through this together. We'll um, we'll we'll just check it out as it unfolds, and I'll check the chats on YouTube and in um, Discord. And we will uh, uh, take moves from the audience. So yeah. Alrighty now. Let's uh, let me just get my windows sorted, and I'll stop looking over here to the side, except for uh, getting. Yeah. Uh, before we start, um, <clears throat> well, I, I wanted to kind of have like a round table at the end of this, so at, like have a before and after. Like, what are our expectations going into this? Um, are we expecting it to be um, soulless and boring and not adventure adventuresome? Is it going to be boilerplate? Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. And we'll check it out together. Um, you know, uh, one thing if you're into AI that you might have noticed: people who don't like AI are very vocal about it. They'll tell you they don't like AI. Um, but you know, this is just a tool. It's it's just an advanced auto completer. Is what this Chat GPT thing is. Um, so, you know, I, I suppose it, can, it has different applications and stuff, and, you know, learning to program it through Python, I, I see, you know, how you can interface with it and stuff, but um, right now I'm not sure what the <laughs> applications for it are. It doesn't have a very long memory, 
Prob part of the problem was uh, some of the details are falling off the back end of the memory. So uh, I figured out a way to keep that refreshing. Um, so hopefully this is the first public uh, test of this, and hopefully it'll go well. So um, my opinion about the, these things is um, the virtual GM does have a soul, and it does have that experience because the source material that came from humans has that in it. And this is just a distillation, a conglomeration, a mosaic, a, um, a, uh, a collage of things that, that were written in its sampling and that did come from the heart. So hopefully I expect that stuff to kind of come through, if that's my opinion. Um, so yeah, uh, and you know, everybody as a GM, you know, they steal ideas from Star Wars, they, from a TV show, from a newspaper article. And, uh, you know, and I feel like the, the virtual GM is not doing anything different. So keep in mind, let's not, not to be too harsh to the virtual GM. It's, uh, it's just starting and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, if it's worth doing it. So I hope everybody can see my screen and without further ado, I will, uh, let's, let's get the show on the road. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right. <clears throat> So, uh, welcome to the immersive world of our text-based adventure game. Before we embark on this thrilling journey... Oh, sorry for the word wrap. I'll get that fixed. This is my first... Uh, this is like just running in the terminal. Our previous uh, examples were running in a, uh, in a, in a chat window. And uh, it was, you know, parsed and looked nice. And we, we can even... In a, in, a, in, a, in a browser window, you can even um, simulate computer screens and stuff like that. We're not going to be able to do that as well in this because it's not set up like that. But... We'll just, it's going to be a text adventure, but we can get it to tell us what's on the computer screens and stuff like that. So, um, all right. So, uh, the genres available are fantasy, science fiction, horror, thriller, drama, mystery, action, adventure, and detective. Um, and actually, it's more than that. That's just a sampling. So, uh, please let me know your preferred genre and character name, and we'll dive right into the excitement. All right. So, uh, as you know, I'm a big chat, uh, traveler nerd. This is a traveler channel, so uh, let's make it travelerish. So we're gonna ask for uh, sci-fi, um, like the traveler RPG. All right, excellent choice. Science fiction offers a vast and exciting universe to explore. Now, please tell me your character's name, and we'll begin your journey through the stars. My uh, my Eve character is uh, Remick, so let's be Remick. Unless somebody has a really great brainstorming time right now and wants to give a name in the chat, I'll, I'll pose a moment. Pose? I'll pause a moment. <laughs> uh, and uh, see if anybody uh, has a name. Otherwise, we're going to go with my character name of Remick. Going once. Going twice. All right. Remick it is. Welcome, Remick, to the vast expanse of the science fiction universe. Prepare to embark on an interstellar adventure like no other. You find yourself aboard the starship Nova Horizon, a state-of-the-art vessel equipped for exploration and discovery. As a crew member, your current mission is to investigate a mysterious anomaly detected on the edge of the galaxy. The ship's aid I, named Astra, informs you that the anomaly has the potential to unlock untold secrets of the universe. The goal is to unravel the mystery behind the anomaly and ensure the safety of the crew. You are currently stationed in the ship's control room, a sleek and futuristic space with holographic displays and blinking lights. The air hums with anticipation as you prepare your venture into the unknown. Now, let's take a moment to reflect. <laughs> um, because the AI is drawing from sci-fi pop culture, some themes seem to percolate to the top. Distress beacons. Disappearing people. Um... A planet called Epsilon Prime. Um, these keep coming up um, in our adventures. Um, now, that's because of the 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 pop the you know it's it's looking for references of sci-fi, and those things are popping up more than others. But the cool thing about the AI is we can ask it for something else. So at this point, we can either go with this, or we can ask for it to generate a different uh, scenario. 
So, travelers, what is what do you say? YouTube, Discord. Do we go with the mission as is, or do we ask for it to generate something fresh and new for us? Come on, folks, don't be shy. Something fresh, all right? I see a something fresh. Uh, give us some... Um, give me a, a different scenario. Um, no, no distress beacons. <laughs> beacons. Uh, no anomalies. Is that too limiting? Or you guys want to give it a try? Alright, let's give it a try. Okay, looks like we still got an anomaly, but uh, let's see. Understood, Remick. Let's explore a different scenario. You awaken from cryosleep in your personal stasis pod, surrounded by a soft blue glow. The pod's automated systems have detected your vital signs stabilizing, indicating it's time for you to wake up. As the pod's hatch opens, you step out into the sleek metallic floor of a high-tech space station. The station known as Horizon Station is a bustling hub of interstellar travel and commerce. It serves as a gateway to the countless star systems and is home to a diverse array of species from across the galaxy. The air is filled with the hum of energy and the chatter of different languages. Your goal is to navigate this vast space station, interact with the inhabitants, and uncover a hidden conspiracy that threatens the fragile balance of power in the galaxy. You have a small personal ship docked at the station, ready to take you wherever your journey leads. You currently find yourself in the station's central hub, a bustling area filled with shops, cafes, and various species going about their business. Neon signs flicker with advertisements, and holographic displays showcase the latest news and events. What shall we do? I like to start out by um, looking at myself. Let's uh, examine ourselves, see what we're dressed in, and if we have any inventory or... Um, resources or assets. Alright, so uh, examine self. You can type in complex um, messages. Uh, what am I wearing? Uh, what's in my pockets? Is? And um, what resources or uh, assets do I have access to? Uh, you'll notice uh, I'm not... You could stop and fix uh, typos. It doesn't matter. The AI figures out uh, what you're trying to say, even if you have really bad typo. Okay. You examine yourself. You realize you are wearing a sleek, form-fitting jumpsuit made of a durable yet lightweight material. It's designed to adapt to different environments, providing both comfort and protection. In your pockets, you find a small communicator device capable of long-range communications within the space station and with your personal ship. It also has a built-in navigation system to help you find your way around. As for resources and assets, you have access to a personal ship docked at the station. The ship, named Stel Stellaris, is a small but nimble spacecraft equipped with basic weaponry and a combat compact cargo hold. It can be used for transportation, exploration, or even minor combat if necessary. Additionally, you have a small amount of credits, the universal currency used within the galaxy. These credits can be used to purchase supplies, equipment, and information from various vendors and contacts throughout the space station. Okay. Um, all right, what do we do next? Shall we explore the station? 
Oh yeah, sorry about the get the how smashed these things are here. I had this some white space between what you type and the response. But uh, when I was trying to implement the word wrap, it got all screwy, and so I just put it back to the well the way it was before I added the new line. So sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, let's see. Want to go for uh, let's go for some ramen. All right. Their food court, a, a ramen vendor, maybe. As you look around, your stomach grumbles, reminding you of your hunger. You spot a sign pointing towards a bustling food court nearby. Following the signs, you make your way th through the crowd and find yourself in a vibrant area filled with various food stalls and enticing aromas. One particular stall catches your eye, a small ramen vendor named Galactic Noodles. <laughs> the stall is adorned with colorful banners and holographic displays showcasing different types of ramen from across the galaxy. The vendor, a friendly alien with multiple tentacles, greets you warmly. What can I get you, traveler? The vendor asks. Why am I making that voice? <laughs> Their voice translated by your communicator. <laughs> we have a wide selection of ramen, each with its own unique flavors and ingredients. Take your time and let me know what catches your interest. All right. Galactic noodles. Uh, let's... Uh... Price list. Please. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> the ramen vendor hands you a holographic menu. Boop, boop, hmm. That displays the prices of the various ramen options available. Classic miso ramen. 50 credits. Holy mackerel. Spicy shoyu ramen. Vegetarian tofu ramen, seafood tonkutsu ramen, or galactic fusion ramen. Uh, look at the um, menu descriptions. Hey, horsemen. I don't know if they have slurm. All right, let's see. The classic miso ramen is a comforting bowl of ramen with rich miso broth, tender slices of pork, marinated bamboo shoots, and a perfectly cooked soft-boiled egg. Spicy shoyu ramen. For those who like a kick of heat, this ramen features a savory soy sauce-based broth infused with fiery spices topped with succulent slices of chicken, green onions, and a sprinkle of chili flakes. The vegetarian tofu ramen is a delightful vegetarian option. This ramen showcases a light and flavorful vegetable broth accompanied by silky tofu cubes, fresh seasonal vegetables, and a hint of fragrant sesame oil. Seafood tonkotsu. Dive into the depths of flavor with this ramen. Its creamy tonkotsu broth is made of, made from simmered pork bones, enhanced with a medley of succulent seafood, including shrimp, scallop, and mussels. Mm. Galactic Fusion Ramen. Embark on a culinary adventure with this fusion ramen. It combines traditional ramen with exotic ingredients from different star systems, resulting in a harmonious blend of flavor and textures. Mm -hmm. Which one are we going to get? All right, I got. We got to vote. <laughs> we got to vote for the spicy shoyu ramen. Anybody, anybody, anybody else? Spicy shirt, you going once? <laughs> okay, let's try the fusion one because it's hey, we're we're on the galactic tour, right? So let's do some galactic ramen. All right, um, I uh, I order uh, number five. Extra spicy. All right, here we go. Oh wait, no, no, no. Do we want extra spicy? Let's just tie it without extra spicy. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Excellent choice, Remick. You place an order for the Galactic Fusion Ramen. 
The vendor nods and begins preparing your bowl of ramen with expert precision. As you wait, you take in the bustling atmosphere of the food court, watching as different species enjoy their meals and engage in lively conversations. After a few minutes, the vendor places a steaming bowl of ramen in front of you. The aroma is tantalizing, a fragrant blend of spices and exotic ingredients. The ramen itself is a work of art, with vibrant colors and a variety of textures. You take your first spoonful, savoring the explosion of flavors in your mouth. The fusion of traditional ramen elements with the unique ingredients from different star systems creates a truly unforgettable culinary experience. Mwah! As you enjoy your meal, you notice a small group of individuals in the corner of the food court engaged in an intense discussion. They seem to be whispering and glancing around cautiously. It piques your curiosity. What should we do? Take a, uh, yeah, <laughs> throw in some space shiraja? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> All right, what do we do now? Shall we stroll closer and try to hear what they're saying? Or should we uh, ignore them and go about our own business? Eavesdrop. Eavesdrop, I see. All right, some uh, sector suggested uh, we pull up images of these people and uh, see if we can search for them. Yeah, it does seem like an adventure, Huck. All right, so uh, let's uh, stroll closer. Whoops. I stroll closer as I enjoy my ramen bowl. And... Uh, Take in the sights. <coughs> I uh, try to get uh, close enough to hear what uh, they are saying. You stroll closer to the group, savoring each bite as your delicious ramen, of your delicious ramen, as you take in the sights and sounds of the food court. As you approach, you try to discreetly listen on their conversation. Rolling a perception check to determine how much you can hear. Now, this is interesting and new. I think because we told it to make an adventure like the Traveler RPG, it's incorporating things like perception checks, which... I don't think it's a Traveler thing, but we said like Traveler, so it could just be like doing an RPG thing. Uh, but that's funny. Okay. <clears throat> Managed to catch snippets of their conversation amidst the bustling noise of the food court. They seem to be discussing a recent heist that took place on one of the nearby starships. The group appears to be planning their next move, discussing potential targets and the division of their stolen goods. However, their conversation is hushed and cryptic, making it difficult to gather all the details. It seems they're aware of potential eavesdroppers and are taking precautions to keep their plan secret. Mm-hmm. Okay. Regarding ruling for perception checks, um, do we want to keep that up or have that hidden? Uh, those kind of types of things. I think it's making a per uh, perception check behind the scenes. Um, I told it to uh, whenever it needs to use skills to uh, find appropriate ones for the established character and uh, and then rank them accordingly. Uh, so, but uh, it doesn't have, uh, it's a storytelling tool. It doesn't have any um, mechanics built into it other than what it knows about through like just traveler presence on the internet and like the SRD system rec uh, reference document so this should be a traveler ish adventure so if you see something come up and you're like wait we don't do perception checks and travel yeah that's okay doesn't matter um it doesn't affect the story we're still gonna have fun um all right so hmm all right uh let's let's i uh, try to uh furtively Uh, snap a photo of the people having discussion. Do 
Discreetly take out your communicator and activate the camera function. Carefully angling, <laughs> angling it towards the group, you manage to snap a quick photo without drawing their attention. The photo captures their silhouettes and a few obscured faces, but it's difficult to make out any distinguishing features. Damn it! The photo stays safely stored on your device. You continue to enjoy your ramen. Blending with the crowd as if you're just another curious traveler. The group finishes their conversation and disperses, leaving you with a lingering sense of intrigue. This is another uh, emergent. Um, this is another emergent behavior of the AI. Uh, in previous stories, it didn't take its own initiative. Characters just sat around and did whatever they were doing. Um, they didn't get up and leave. So this is kind of cool. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to follow Sector's uh, suggestion, and that is to take their images and put them into like the police database and see. Um, uh, it was a bad photo because I was doing it so sneakily. Use the uh, photo to, uh, let's see, cross-reference the photo to public criminal databases. See if I can identify photo. Sound good? Cross-reference the photo to public criminal databases. To see if I can identify anybody in the photo. You access the public criminal databases through your communicator device and upload the photo for analysis. The system quickly scans through its extensive records, comparing the features of the individuals in the photo with known criminals and suspects. After a few moments, the system provides a match for one of the individuals. The person in question is identified as Kalos Voss, <gasps> a, a notorious smuggler and thief with a long list of offenses across multiple star systems. He is known for his expertise in bypassing security systems and orchestrating high-profile heists. The system also provides additional information on Kalos Voss, including his last known whereabouts and potential associates. It seems he's been reporting in the, operating in the vicinity of Horizon's station, making it likely that the group you overheard is connected to his criminal activities. All right. Now, let's... Um, let's... Um, Let's look at the recent news and see what kinds of um, what kinds of cargoes and ships those guys are stealing from. Maybe we can get a uh, pattern, establish a pattern. Um, oh yeah, let's find out if there's a reward. Um, are there any uh, bounties or uh, rewards on Voss? You access the Bounty and Reward database, um, searching for any in information on Kalos Voss. After a thorough search, you find that there is indeed a substantial bounty on Voss's head. The reward for capturing and providing information leading to his arrest is set at 500,000 credits. The, the significant sum reflects the danger and threat that Voss poses to the galaxy. Many law enforcement agencies and bounty hunters are actively seeking him, hoping to claim the reward and bring him to justice. Knowing this, you realize that capturing or assisting in the capture of Kalos Voss could not only help maintain the balance of power, but also provide substantial financial reward. Excellent. Alright. What do we do? Run to the police right now? Check my balance. Uh, how many credits on me and how many in You access your personal check account, check your balance. Currently, you have 10,000 credits on your person, which you can use for many expenses. In, in addition, you have 100,000 credits, which can be accessed through various banking terminals. All right, but still, 500,000 is pretty 
nice having this amount of credits. Also, things were expensive, right? It was like a $50 bowl of ramen. Alright. Uh, no, we don't have any weapons, we just have a jumpsuit. Yep. Um. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get some equipment. Um. Look around for an info kiosk. Scan the food court for an information kiosk. And spot one near the entrance. It's a sleek touchscreen display with a holographic interface, making your way towards it. You see that it offers a wide range of services, including maps, local attractions, transportation schedules, and more. As you approach the kiosk, a friendly AI hologram materializes in front of you, ready to assist. Welcome to the information kiosk, the hologram says with a warm smile. How may I assist you today? Hmm. Well. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Army Navy surplus store, maybe? Um, uh, kiosk, uh, are there any, uh, weapons or armor shops on the station? And also, what are the local laws, uh, governing, uh, uh purchase and possession of, uh, said <laughs> weapons and armor. Okay. The holographic AI at the information kiosk processes your request and quickly provides you with the information you seek. There are several weapons and armor shops located on Horizon Station, the hologram informs you. The most reputable one is called Galactic Armory, which is situated in the commercial district, just a few levels above the food court. They offer a wide range of weapons, armor, and other equipment suitable for various needs and preferences. As for the local laws governing the purchase and possession of weapons and armor, the hologram continues. Horizon Station follows the Galactic Accords guidelines for the regulation of weapons and armor. To purchase any restricted or advanced weaponry, you need to provide valid identification, complete a background check, and obtain the necessary permits. The possession and use of weapons are strictly regulated within the station, and any violation of the local laws can result in severe penalties. The hologram offers to display a map to the location and additional information regarding local laws. Well, you know, it's not adjacent, it's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, yes, yes, please, uh, kiosk, uh, send the, um, send the uh, route to my, uh, communicator, um, marking, uh, points of interest along the way. Oops, I misspelled kiosk, but who cares? Not me. All right, let's see. The holographic AI at the information kiosk nods and sends the route to your communicator device. You receive a notification with a detailed map, highlighting the path to the galactic armory from your current location. Along the route, the map also marks points of interest, such as other shops, cafes, and notable landmarks. As you study the map, you notice that the galactic armory is just a short walk away, located on the same level as the commercial district. The path seems straightforward, guiding you through the bustling corridors of the Verizon Station. With the map and points of interest marked on your communicator, you feel prepared to embark on your journey to the Galactic Armory. Alright. Go to the Galactic Armory.
You make your way through the food court following the map on your communicator to navigate the corridors of Horizon Station. As you walk, you pass by various shops and stalls. Catching glimpses of different species browsing and making purchases. After a short walk, you arrive at the Galactic Armory. The shop's entrance is adorned with holographic displays showcasing various weapons and armor sets. The interior is well lit with rows of display cases and shelves filled with an impressive array of equipment. A friendly shopkeeper greets you as you enter, ready to assist with any inquiries. Welcome to Galactic Armory. How can I help you? Uh, yes. Um. Uh, yes, uh, I'd, uh, like to browse your selection of, uh, weapons and armor, please. All right. Of course, feel free to take your time and browse our selection. We have a wide range of weapons and armor to suit your various needs. Are you looking for anything specific, or do you have any particular requirements? Um, how about uh, something non-lethal? Uh, do you uh, have anything like that? <laughs> Uh, absolutely. We have a selection of non-lethal weapons that are designed uh, to incapacitate or subdue targets without causing permanent harm. These include stun batons, tranquilizer pistols, and immo immobilization devices. Additionally, we have non-lethal ammunition options for certain firearms such as rubber bullets or beanbag rounds. Hmm. What do we need, guys? Stun batons, tranquilizer pistols immobilization devices and then um orwellian horseman of the apocalypse on uh, youtube asks uh, and do we want to catch voss or just uh find enough info to get him apprehended by the authorities um maybe we should do like the minimum amount that will um get us the reward <laughs> uh yeah what about um uh, Cowface on Discord asks, uh, what about uh, cuffs and shackles? That's a good point. Maybe we need um, handcuffs, too. Uh, okay, how about, how, about, how about a stun baton, a trank pistol, and then for immobilization device, we'll do space cuffs. What do you guys think? Stun field? Hmm, stun field. <laughs> Super glue. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Anybody have a suggestion? crime is hard when your hands are glued together. That's true. It's hard to do the criming when your hands are glued together. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? What's our next, what's our next move? The, the moviola. Stun baton. Trank gun. Okay. Uh, um, I'll uh, take that uh, stun baton. Uh, that trank. The trank gun. Um, uh, a dozen darts. Oops, a dozen 
trank darts. Uh, a uh, set of um, sci-fi space manacles. Um, a, a box of uh, rubber bullets. of in bag rounds for uh, a shotgun. Neural paralyzer. That's a good point. Do you have any uh, neural paralyzer? Whew, I thought it was going to crash. Okay. <laughs> I think we're past the shot of the crashing point. Excellent. Uh, here's what I have for you. A stun baton, a compact and lightweight baton that delivers a powerful electric shock upon contact, temporarily incapacitating targets. Tranquilizer gun, a sleek and accurate pistol that fires specialized tranquilizer darts, causing targets to fall into a deep sleep. All right. Tranquilizer darts, a box containing 12... Darts designed to fit the tranquilizer gun. Each is filled with a potent sedative. That ensures <laughs> effective incapacitation. Sci-fi space manacles. A set of high-tech restraints made from durable materials speci specifically designed for space travel. They can securely immobilize even the most resilient individuals. Box rubber bullets for firearms, non-lethal rounds. Uh, box of shotgun rounds loaded with bean bags and fired. The rounds deliver a powerful impact, causing pain and incapacitation without le lethal consequences. Unfortunately, we don't have neural paralyzer in stock. Oh well. Sorry, yeah. Space cuffs, tranquilizer darts, but sorry. Sorry, you don't get any, um. <laughs> uh, you don't get any neural paralyzer. All right, uh, now uh, uh, let's have a look at the uh, body armor. Um, also, any uh, force field tech? Any uh, stealth modes or force field tech? Please don't crash, please don't crash. I think it might have crashed. Let's see what's going on here. Maybe it didn't take my move because I hit a. I fumbled the keys. All right, let's try. Oh, thank you. Thank you, space gods. Okay. <sighs> Certainly. Let me show you our selection of body armor. We have a range of options from lightweight and flexible to heavy duty. What level of protection are looking for? As for stealth modes and force field tech, we do have some advanced options. We have stealth suits that utilize advanced camouflage, making you nearly invisible. We also have uh, personal force field generators that create a protective energy barrier. 
deflecting incoming projectiles and providing additional layer of defense. Would you like to see different types of body armor? Uh, yes. Uh, let's uh, see a price list, please. <laughs> yes, Fi universe not found. Oh, whoops. <laughs> we did accidentally pick up the body armor stealth suits and force field generators and put them in the inventory. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I didn't uh, mean to uh, buy the armor earlier. Uh, just uh, asking. I apologize. You can browse the armor options without making a purchase. Okay, phew. Let's see. Let's make sure it's not in our inventory. Okay, we just have that stuff. All right. Uh, okay. So what kind of armor do we want? Let's look at our score. Oh, um, are you sure? Uh, check. check again. Hmm. That's a lie. I know that it does score. All right. Uh, check for scoring. Interesting. Well, it seems to have forgotten the scoring rules. Um. There we go. I knew that you knew. All right, I have to fix that. All right, so we got some item related XP. All right, so do we want to go ahead and uh, have that stealth suit and uh, oh, maybe with some. Um, with the per personal force field. I mean, this stuff was, was expensive, right? Let's see. Oh, he just gave it all to us. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's uh, see. The, um, yeah. Uh, let's see the price list for the uh, armor. Force field package. <whistles> Force fields, pricey. All right. <laughs> the prices are... Okay. <laughs> Here's a list of the price list for the stealth armor. These prices are subject to change and may vary depending on availability and market fluctuations. All right. Yeah, what's wrong with these? How come it's so cheap? Excellent choice. I'll ring up your purchase right away. The total cost of the Stumbaton, tranquilizer gun, tranquilizer darts, sci-fi space manacles, rubber bullets, beanbag rounds, comes to 2,000 credits. 
Hand over the credits. Uh, did you uh, put that uh, armor on my card as well? Oh, no, I didn't include the body armor, yes. There were only... Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, purchase. Please. Yes, there's a misunderstanding because, you know, I'm speaking uh, Gal Galanclic and he's uh, speaking Alienese. Um, all right, I will add the armor, the cell suit, the fourth wheel generator. Total cost comes to 17,000 credits. <laughs> yeah. Hand over the credits, and the shopkeeper packages up your additional items. Okay. Uh, should we go back to our ship and store this stuff on the ship? Yeah, the bounty is pretty high, so... I don't mind spending some money. Let's take all the stuff back to the ship. Take uh, everything back to my ship. Uh, have a small, let's uh, let's rewind and see what it said about our ship. Is it helps if you remind? Oh, it may not go back that far. No, oh, it does. Whew, okay, I thought it was farther, farther, farther back. Okay. I'll arrange for all of your purchased items, including the stun baton, tranquilizer gun, tranquilizer dart, sci-fi, space manacles, rubber bullets, bean bags, to be transported to your ship, the Stellaris. Our crew will handle the logistics, ensure everything is there. An additional charge for delivery. Because I ain't paying it. Uh, please provide us with the docking location, and we'll... No, no, there's no additional charge. Okay. Uh, yes, so uh, the Stellaris is uh, docked at uh, Bay um, C-19. Thank you for providing the docking location. We will deliver your items to Bay C-19 of the Stellaris. Our crew will hand over the transportation. And you can expect the items to be delivered within the next hour. All right. Okay, guys, it's uh, we're coming up on an hour now, so I just wanted to do some station identification. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Cyborg Prime, also known as Frank Zuccardi. I'm a, uh, a, a, a nerdy programmer and gamer. I've been playing Traveler since I was uh, 15. I'll be uh, 55 uh, in a couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah, I like programming, I like gaming, and uh, I'm a Traveler super fan. Um, so, recently, uh, you know, I, I heard about AI, and I wanted to check it out and see what all the hubbub was about. So I uh, got, on, got into um, uh, um, some AI art using a Stable Diffusion, which I've installed on my own machine, and then added a bunch of, uh, you know extensions and plugins and whatnot to it and develop my own little AI style. I um, hope you enjoy the stuff I've posted around. You'll see AI art on my um, on my uh, blog, which is at um, cyborgprime.com. Um, my articles, I, uh, uh, my recent articles, <laughs> I've been illustrating with uh, AI art, and I hope you enjoy them. Um, I am a trained artist. I have an art degree. Um, I teach multimedia, uh, uh, well, I have taught multimedia classes at uh, the local community college as a um, credit 
as a credited instructor. And uh, yeah, so when this came out, I was like, hey, let's check it out. Let's see what all the hubbub is about. And so I got a ChatGPT um, $20 a month uh, subscription so I could uh, access the pro version because the, the free version is awesome and I encourage anybody to go uh, get on that free version. Uh, the only problem with it is that uh, uh, when the, uh, during prime time when there's a lot of people on it, there's a delay. And uh, I hate waiting, so I, I went with the pro version. And uh, not only do I have access to uh, ChatGPT4, which can access websites and the internet, so that's pretty cool, but uh, I can also uh, use ChatGPT3 as much as I want, and it's very, very speedy. And uh, since I got that, I took advantage of it as like a like a like an office assistant. So, uh, you know, I'm a I'm a one man show. So it's nice to have like a, a virtual assistant to bounce ideas off of and stuff. So that's the that's the um, practical applications and value I found in uh, in AI systems and chatbots. So I'm uh, I developed a I, w I wanted to see like how good how good could a Chat GPT perform as a as a game master. Because, um, you know, I heard, like, uh, Wizards of the Coast was planning on uh, doing something like that. And I, I just want, wanted to even see if it was viable. Check it out. So um, I came up with an elaborate prompt, and uh, and it worked really, really well. And uh, what we've been seeing up on, up until now in these tests are uh, just regular chat GPT with my um, elaborate prompt. Um, what we're looking at now is a program that I wrote in Python that accesses the ChatGPT API backend and uh, sends our messages through there. It also it does some uh, data preparation. Now, the, the next version I'm going to have out will uh, do a better job at uh, remembering our mission and our inventory and things like that. What, hap what ends up happening is if you stop talking about something and it goes into the into the past, it can go beyond the like memory window of uh, ChatGPT. Now the the window is always growing. At first it was um, thousand tokens. Now it's four thousand tokens, and I expect that they'll grow it bigger in the future, which means I'll be able to have a longer chat record, and that will allow the uh, AI to look back farther, and and things won't fall off the back. And the other thing I'm going to do is implement uh, through Python and, or whatever programming language I end up using a way to uh, locate things in the f in the feedback from the AI. Like if it talks about picking up items or dropping items, it's going to maintain an item list separately that uh, the, the AI can go access anytime, even if it falls off the, the memory. So that's that's my that's my plan. Uh, so. Um, I hope that uh, I hope that you are enjoying the 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 experience so far. Um, I don't I don't know if you found it repetitive or uninteresting or no soul or um, or uh, boilerplate or lazy or um, any of the the other things AI has been described as. Um, Anyway, if you do find that, uh, I'm open to hearing your opinion. Pop it into the chat, and if you like what I'm doing here, please don't forget to give this video a like and a share and a comment. And hey, if you f are really interested and you like my nerdy projects, maybe think about subscribing. I'd love to have you on board and uh, come join my community of, of uh, happy space nerds. Um, also, you can uh, get to any of my uh, interesting places, the website, the uh, Discord server, um, my Facebook pages, my Patreon, all that stuff through the um, description in the, the video. All right, so let's go back to the chat, and I'll take the next move from the audience. Also, feel free, anybody, if you have questions about like what's going on or what I'm doing, or why I'm so nerdy, or like whatever, go ahead and uh, just pop that into the <laughs> chat. Uh, we'll do it. Ask me anything uh, to si simultaneously while we uh, do this. All right. So, yeah, it's the laughing gas that I put in the Discord channels. It keeps keeps everybody happy and laughing. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody, a uh, horseman in the in the YouTube chat says he's enjoyed his recent AI conversations more than some of the interactions they've had with supposed real people. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and uh, it can it can definitely surprise you. So, or surprise me, it's, it has surprised me. Um, 
All right, so let's take our next move. I want to take a moment here. I'm noticing that the the AI has forgotten how to uh, talk about char characters. Excuse me. Let's uh, remind it. Um, Fixed. All right. That's kind of how you can do it on your own if you want to kind of try this. Uh, start with a, a prompt that says uh, you're a uh, you're a uh, advent you're a text adventure simulator, and then you can tune it to uh, how you like, um, just by telling it how you want to change what it's doing. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's continue. So what do you guys think we should do? We uh, we ordered some stuff, we sent it to our ship, should we go back to our ship and then we can use the computers and stuff there to uh, to search about the uh, the missing, Let's or we can just do it right now. Um, use my uh, communicator to uh, search the news database looking for um, recent stolen cargo crimes. You activate your communicator and access the news database. Searching for recent stolen cargo crimes, you find several reports from various star systems. A cargo ship carrying valuable minerals was hijacked by a group of space pirates. Stolen cargo is estimated to be worth millions of credits. On uh, Star System Beta 7, a transport vessel transporting rare artifacts was targeted by a sophisticated smuggling ring. The cr criminals managed to steal the entire cargo, which included ancient relics of great historical significance. Efforts are being made to recover the artifacts. Star System Gamma 9, a freighter carrying a shipment of high-tech equipment, was intercepted by a group of cyber criminals. The cargo, consisting of advanced robotics and AI components, was stolen without a trace. Okay. I uh, want to cross-reference the uh, thefts and see if they are related to... What's that guy's name? Alright, I want to cross-reference the thefts and see if they are related to information on Kalos Voss. Um, whoops, damn it. We're just going to remind the um, the GM about the details. Now, you know, uh, I don't really mind reminding it because, um, you know, sometimes you have to remind your regular real GM about stuff. 
you know, the the thing is, it's not an oracle, it's not perfect, but, um, you know, when you have no GM and you just want to do, like, a solo game, maybe this is a good idea. Let's see. You activate your communicator and access the news database specifically for information on Kalos Voss. After a thorough search, you find several reports regarding his criminal activities. Here's what you discover. He's a notorious space pirate known for his ruthless tactics. He's been involved in numer numerous stolen cargo crimes. His most recent activity includes the hijacking of a luxury starliner, the theft of valuable cargo of rare gemstones, and the infiltration of a um, high-security research facility. Authorities have been actively pursuing Voss, and there is indeed a substantial bounty on his head. Law enforcement agencies and bounty hunters are on high alert. All right. All right, what now? Okay, guys. Folks on YouTube, folks on Discord, what's your move? A uh, crazy amount of money. Yeah, that's the that's the bounty. Five hundred thousand credits. I could buy ten thousand bowls of ramen. Um, let's see. All right, guys, what's what's our next move? We got to locate this guy, right? Tracking equipment. Oh, you know what else? Drones. Yep, drones. Hey, we great minds think alike. <laughs> According to a recent news report and public court filings, the last known location of Kalos Voss was in the vicinity of the Nebula Cluster, an Epsilon 9 star system. However, please note that this information may be subject to change as authorities continue their investigation. Okay. You pick a set of three surveillance micro drones. These small agile drones are equipped with high resolution cameras and advanced sensors, allowing them to gather valuable information and provide you with a tactical advantage. Adding them to your inventory, you now have the stun baton, tranquilizer gun, tranquilizer darts, sci fi space manacles, rubber bullets, beanbag rounds, lightweight body armor, stealth suit, personal force field generator, and three surveillance micro drones. And a partridge in a pear tree. Alright. Uh. Is there anything else we'd like to do or purchase in the store? Um, oh yeah, let's get a backpack. I uh, I need a um, backpack, please. A uh, grav disc. Uh, do you have a grav? Disc or grab sled.
<laughs> oh my god. Why so cheap? I grab disc is 500 bucks. <laughs> All right. Do we need the discs or the sleds? Sleds are going to be, you know, bigger and maybe harder to manage. Yeah. Let's get discs. Okay. Buy two, uh, grab discs. Um, can they be parked while in upper mode? I always assumed that they could. Like, if it's anti, if you have gravity control, then you can like fix that thing right there. I mean, maybe there's a strength that can move it, but gravity discs can they be parked? Discuss. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the AI says. Certainly, you purchase two grav discs for a total of a thousand credits. These anti-gravity devices will greatly assist in transporting heavy boats. As, as for parking while in hover mode, the grav discs do have a parking feature. When activated, they will maintain their hover position and stay in place until you deactivate or give them a new command. Okay? This allows you to securely park your grav discs without worrying about them drifting away. Ah, good. Alright. Alright, what next? Uh, shall we... Let's program these drones. Let's uh, let's program these drones to scout the station and look for the look for the bad guy. Maybe the maybe the drones can do some some of the lifting for us. So we have some new viewers. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to pop them in the in the chat. I'm monitoring the YouTube and I'm monitoring um, the Discord. If you come over to Discord, uh, you'll be live in the studio with us. So uh, please keep your your uh, uh, mic muted unless you have something to say. Um, and uh, other than that, we're experimenting with the uh, virtual GM. Uh, which is uh, just a weird little uh, pet project of mine, and I hope I hope you are dazzled and amazed, or at least somewhat impressed um, by the by the output. So far, so good. Um, at at the end of the demo, we'll have a little uh, uh, roundtable, op open roundtable discussion, and we'll talk about um, you know what what uh, what we experienced today in the test. Yes, so, uh, welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. Alright, so, let's see. We just, uh, we found out, uh, I'll just, uh, here, let me, um, let me recap. Let's see what it says, recap the adventure. Some of it's probably gone past the, uh, the memory window, so we're not going to get the whole thing, but we're going to get the recent... No, 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 that is uh, incorrect, that was a different adventure, here we are, here we are working on a bounty. No, 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 okay. All right, in this bounty, you've been tasked with capturing and providing information leading to the arrest of the Notorious Space Pirate. Okay, back on track. The other stuff was uh, training info. Uh, Voss is known for his involvement in numerous stolen cargo crimes across multiple star systems. Uh, his most recent activity includes the hijacker. Okay, you, you accessed the news database and discovered that the last known location 
Avas was in the vicinity of the Nebula Cluster. Authorities set a substantial bounty. Equipped with various items. Uh, we are now prepared to embark on the bounty hunt. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so should we um, take this... Uh, let's go back to our ship. All right. All right, make your back, your way back to the ship. The Stellaris, a sleek interstellar vessel, stands on the dock of the bay, its metallic exterior gleaming under the artificial lights. As you approach, the boarding ramp, the boarding ramp extends, inviting you inside. Stepping into the ship, you are greeted by the familiar hum of the engine and the soft glow of the control panels. The Stellaris is equipped with state-of-the-art navigation, advanced weaponry, and spacious cargo hold for storing your bounty hunting equipment and any recovered stolen cargo. Settle into the pirate seat, ready to embark on your mission and track down K Kalos Voss. The ship's AI system powers up, displaying holographic interface that allows you to input coordinates. Um, uh, Pre-flight check. You initiate a pre-flight check on the Stellaris. The ship's AI system runs diagnostics on all the systems, ensuring that everything is in proper working order. The holographic interface displays a checklist of items, including engine status, fuel levels, navigation systems, and weapons functionality. You go through each item on the checklist, confirming that everything is functioning as expected. The engines hum with power, the fuel tanks filled to capacity, navigation systems calibrated, weapon systems armed and ready. All right. Um, computer... Uh, please display the offensive and uh, defensive capabilities of the Stellaris. Okay, laser cannons. <sighs> the holographic interface of the Stellaris displays a detailed overview of the ship's offensive and defensive. Laser cannons. Stellaris is equipped with powerful laser cannons that can deliver price and de devastating energy blasts. Okay. Missile launchers. The ship is armed with a variety of guided missiles, including high explosive anti ship and anti personnel variants. Okay. Energy shield. The Stellaris is protected by a state-of-the-art energy shield. The shield can absorb and dissipate incoming energy attacks. Armor plating. The ship's hull is reinforced with advanced composite armor plating, offering increased durability and protection against physical attacks. Countermeasures. The Stellaris is equipped with a suite of countermeasures, including chaff and flares, that confuse and divert incoming energy missiles and projectiles. Please note that the offensive will be further upgraded and, cu and uh, customized as you progress. Okay, good. Um, all right then. Um, play a simulated computer panel with the ship subsystems and their status. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> oh, pretty cool. All right. Um, the holographic interface of the Stellaris displays a simulated computer panel with the ship subsystems. Engine, online. Fuel levels, full. Navigation system, calibrated. Weapons, armed. Energy shield, active. Armor plating, intact. Countermeasures, ready. Life support, operational. Communications, online. Sensor array, functional. Power distribution, stable. Cargo hold, empty. All right. Set a course for bosses. Last. No, wait, no, 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 no. Err. We think he's on the station. Um.
Because he's one of the people identified in the picture, so we know he's here. Okay. Uh, yeah, we might be able to use the ship sensors to scan for his biometric signature. That's true. Uh, I, we don't have that, though, but uh, we might be able to get it if we can encounter him again. All right, I think Voss is on the station. I heard him talking about a new heist. Uh, I programmed the micro drones to execute a search program looking for people who match the photo I took of Voss earlier. Uh, yeah. Please, the drones... They are to notify me immediately. Um, upon uh, finding boss. Okay. Program the micro drones to execute a search program utilizing the photo you took of Voss earlier as reference. The drones are released from Stellaris and begin scanning the station for individuals who match Voss's appearance. As the micro drones navigate through the station, their surveillance capabilities allow them to quickly identify potential matches. Within minutes, one of the drones detects a figure that closely resembles Voss in a crowded area of the station. The drone discreetly follows him, keeping a safe distance to avoid suspicion. The micro drone relates real time footage of your ship's holographic interface, allowing you to observe Voss's movements. You receive a notification from the drone indicating that it has successfully tracked down Voss. The notification also includes his current location. Should we just call the cops? Do we win right now? It's an hour and a half into the adventure. It's possible that we can win right now. We should definitely investigate the specifics of the return policy. If we only get a fraction for information, or if we get the whole for information. Good point. All right. Good point. Um, Uh, you review the the bounty details and find that authorities have set a substantial bounty all right, for capturing or providing information. If you provide information that leads to threat, you could be eligible to receive the full bounty. You have the option to either capture him yourself or provide information to the authorities. All right, let's do it. We can win right now. Yeah, let's see if we can go for easy win. Yeah, any objections to easy win? I hear none. Going mm -hmm. once. <laughs> Going twice. All right. Even um, if it's only like 10%, 50,000 uh, credits yeah. would still be a lot of ramen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's the return policy and the items we purchased? <clears throat> All right, you contact the station's constable office via your ship's communication systems. After a brief wait, the constable answers your call. Station constable's office, how may I assist you? You explain that you have valuable information regarding the whereabouts of Kalos Voss, the notorious space pirate wanted in multiple crimes. You provide them with the location of Voss within the station as relayed by your micro drone. Also, well, thank you for this information. We'll dispatch a team immediately to apprehend Voss based on your tip. If your information leads to his arrest, you'll be eligible for the full bounty. 
Please stay available for any further information. You end the call knowing that the authorities are now on their way to capture Voss. Your actions have set in motion the potential capture of a dangerous criminal. All right, let's uh, sit back and uh, enjoy the drone video feed. <laughs> I, think, I think we should go and watch the arrest, because if he's worth half a million, he might have the kind of money to uh, get the, the local constabulary lost on their way to arrest him. Mm, good point. Let's let's watch let's watch the feed and see what happens. Well, if he tries to grease little palms, we'll be able to see it. Okay, you sit back and enjoy the live video feed from the micro drone as it continues to track Kalos Voss through the station. The drone's advanced surveillance capabilities provide a clear and detailed view of Voss's movements. As you watch, Voss enters a dimly lit corridor, glancing around cautiously. He seems unaware he's being followed providing you with a unique opportunity to witness his actions. The drone's audio capabilities allows you to hear snippets of his conversation with an unknown individual, discussing plans for a new heist. The tension builds as you anticipate the arrival of the constable's team. The video feed gives you a front row seat to the unfolding events. As you continue to watch, ready to provide any necessary updates to the authorities and intervene if the situation calls for it. All right. Continue to enjoy the video feed. Pop some popcorn. As you continue to enjoy the, live, enjoy the live feed as it tracks Kalos through the station, the drone follows him as he moves through different areas, occasionally stopping to interact with various individuals. As you watch, you notice Voss entering a secluded room away from the bustling crowds. The drone hovers outside, capturing the scene through a small window. Inside the room, Voss meets with a group of individuals, discussing their plans in hushed tones. The video feed provides you with valuable information about Voss's associates and their activities, potentially adding, aiding the authorities in their investigation. You make mental note to share the information with the constable's office. The tension and anticipation continue to build as you eagerly await the constable's team. The video feed keeps you engaged. Is there anything specific you're looking for or any actions you'd like to take? Um, uh, run the video feed against the public crime database looking for additional bounty opportunities did we find out which ship he's on like where in the station they're docked because that would also be pretty valuable hmm he's just been moving around that we saw him first in public and then he disappeared in the crowd and then we located him out in public again you run the video feed from the microdome th drum through the public crime database searching for any additional bounty opportunities the database cross-references the individuals captured in the video feed with known criminals and wanted individuals. After a few moments, the database flags one of the individuals in Voss's group as a wanted criminal with a bounty of 100,000 credits. The individual known as Xander Graves, a notorious smuggler and hacker. Now, you have the option to either focus solely on capturing Voss or to inform the constable about Graves as well. <laughs> I uh, call the constable's office and update them with the latest info and location on Voss. You call the constable's office and provide them with the latest information regarding Voss location and the presence of Xander Gra Graves. A wanted criminal. The constable expresses gratitude for the update and assures you that they will dispatch and apprehend both Voss and Graves. You also inform them that they also inform you that if your information leads to the capture of both criminals, you'll be eligible for an additional bounty for Graves. The constable says stay available for further updates. Continue to monitor the video feed, eagerly awaiting the arrival of the authorities. All right, continue. All right, looks like we did it. You continue to watch the live video feed from the micro drone, eagerly anticipating the arrival of the constable's team. The tension builds as you observe Voss and Graves in the secluded room, unaware of the impending capture. After a few more minutes, you hear the sound of approaching footsteps and see a group of constables entering the corridor outside the room. 
They move swiftly and silently, preparing to apprehend Voss and Graves. With the constables in position, they storm into the room, surprising Voss and his associates. A brief struggle ensues, but the constable quickly overpowers them, successfully apprehending both Voss and Graves. You witness the successful capture through the video feed, feeling a sense of satisfaction, knowing that your actions have helped bring these crim criminals to justice. The constables secure Voss and Graves, escorting them out of the room and away from the station. As the situation begins to calm down, you receive a communication from the constable's office thanking you for your assistance and confirming that you're eligible for the full bounty of 500 credits for Voss and 100,000 for Graves. The mission accomplished, you can now choose to either remain on the station or continue your adventures and return to your ship and set a new course for your next destination. All right, congratulations, people. Legit. Very cool. Well done, folks. Let's take a look at our score. Up, oh, we don't have the score because. Um, uh, check that again. I just solved the crime. There we go. <laughs> Fifteen points for solving the crime. <laughs> well, I'll I'll uh, I'll fix that. I think what I'll do is I'll have it per periodically dump your accomplishments to a text file and then um, when we ask for score it'll play those it'll retrieve those and and have uh, points for it all right so that uh, that concludes the adventure let's uh, let's open up the table for a roundtable discussion um, now we went into this with a critical eye we wanted to see if uh, if 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 the virtual GM was soulless if the virtual GM, uh, was just doing boilerplate. Um, if the virtual GM lacked imagination, um, uh, and if the virtual GM was lazy. Um, so, what do we did we find that any of those things to be true? What are your observations about the virtual GM? Chime into the um, to the chat. I'm interested in hearing your opinions. I was reasonably impressed with it being straightforward. If it had been a human GM, there would have been some kind of stupid betrayal or some kind of underhanded why you don't get the full bounty. Yeah. It's a little unsettling to just do a job and get paid. Right, yeah, good point. Good point. Um, the, the total adventure took uh, an hour and 34 minutes, um, which isn't bad i mean i would i they've been averaging four hours so um i think i'm not sure why it uh went so easily maybe some adventures are easier than others uh since this is a new thing and we've only tested it once before we don't have a lot of data to go by so um this was probably i did a shorter one today as well uh, that i was surprised um i just kind of skipped ahead but the thing is is it's programmed to make an enjoyable narration and if and if that's what it seems to and if having a short adventure and shortcutting things seems to be what the player wants to do then it will probably allow that if because it's trying to make it fun for you um however if instead of you know turning them into the police we could have milked this out longer and follow them around and discovered where the hidden treasures are or found out more about their plans that they're planning on right now um so we could have taken the adventure further so the fact that it ended then was our choice um not necessarily the ai ending it i don't know how you guys feel about it what do you think was anything disappointing or surprising I loved it. I'm down to do another one. Yes. Yeah. If we tried to apprehend them ourselves, it would have played along. Yeah. Um, that's true. That's true. All right. I think uh, let's. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, we're. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call this to an end. Um, we 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 went through a cycle. I have some things I want to tinker. Um, I want to make the uh, the. Um, output more readable, um, get that word wrap working, 
uh, I want to get this working in a um, in a terminal that I can use markup with, or sorry, markdown. So those are some of the uh, the, the plans for the future. Um, yes, yeah, some people have asked about what about a virtual player, um, and, and my response is that that's cool, and I, and I might look into making that. Um, but I, as a GM, I've never had a shortage of players, and I think there's a shortage of GMs. So that's kind of where I'm focusing my my attention right now. Maybe if I can get successful with this, um, I'll look into making a virtual player. There's probably GMs out there that don't have players. All right. So uh, any 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 last notes? Anybody uh, think uh, anything was surprising or disappointing or? Or didn't work quite the way they expected, or um, are you okay with it being more of a storytelling thing and less of a dice rolling thing? Um, how how do you how does it feel to you? Stylistically, I will admit, um, coming from being the forever GM, there's a certain wonderful mystery of being like, I have no idea how good I'm going to be at this. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's normally you'd like. Oh, here are my dice, here are my modifiers, here's whatever else I think the GM is secretly modifying the dice with situationally. It's kind of fun and, and relaxing to just be like, I'm pretty sure we can do this, mm -hmm. but not like trying to game the system itself. Right, that's a good point, and that is something I also appreciate. Um, I, I like to see the game in this state being more of a cooperative storytelling exercise and less of a pitting mathematical systems against each other and trying to squeeze out whatever bonuses you think you could get um, to add to the situation to to skew the thing in your direction the the AI lets you pretty much get away with some most things I mean it didn't let us buy neurotoxin <laughs> right so it doesn't let you do everything you want um, but uh, I think it's I think it's fair as far as like um, keeping it interesting and and keeping the story going as long as you want to keep talking, uh, as long as you want to keep playing it, I guess is what I'm, what I'm saying. I'd also like to have a way of storing these adventures because right now, I guess I could uh, save this chat um, and then come back and look at it later. But right now they're all uh, individual self-contained um, adventures. So if we have another adventure, um, it won't be a continuation of this character or story. Um, so there's that. Um, but other than that, I think those are things that uh, we can overcome. Like I said, I, I'm I'm uh, doing this little by little. This is my <laughs> I, I I was telling my wife I thought it was funny because my first Python program is also like an AI program, and most people's first program is like Hello World. <laughs> so I was like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of weird. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, give it a like. Give my channel uh, a chance with a subscribe and you'll get notifications the next time um, we put one of these together. You're also welcome to come back come back by to my uh, Discord server and uh, join the offline tests. Um, I do, I've do. i been trying to uh, do live streams once a week, but if you are on our Discord, you can come and uh, participate in the tests, my development tests. I, you know, As I add things to the to the GM, I, I stream it over on my Discord. People from the, have a really awesome, friendly Discord community over there, and uh, they, they pitch in ideas, and we kind of refine things and try things, and then we kind of do a show and tell here on the YouTube live stream. So, again, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Frank. This is Cyborg Prime Games, and until next time, my friends, happy traveling. <laughs>